Hello and welcome back to the Cracking Pang YouTube channel. Today we're solving 1466 reorder routes to make all paths lead to the city zero. There are n cities numbered from zero to n minus one and n minus one roads such that there's only one way to travel between two different cities. Last year, the Ministry of Transport decided to orient the roads in one direction because they're too narrow. Roads are represented by connections where connections of I equals AI BI representing a road from city AI to BI. This year, there's a big event in city zero and many people will want to travel here. The task consists of reorienting some roads such that the city can, such that each city can visit city zero and return the minimum number of roads that needs to be changed. Uh, okay, so let's look at a basic example and figure out how we might want to approach this problem. So we're told that we have six cities and these are the connections, zero to one, one to three, two to three, four to zero, and four to five. And remember that these are, um, one directional, right? So let's kind of do our cities here. So we have city uh, one and zero, we have city three, we have city two, we have city four, and we have city five. So let's um, organize these. So I think based on so I think this is it. So let's kind of draw our little arrows here. So we know that there is an edge from zero to one. Okay, uh, oops, okay, no, there we go. Okay, so we know that there is also one from one to three, and we also have one from two to three, except this is in the opposite direction now. And then we also have from four to zero, and then we also have from four to five. So obviously, which are the cities which can actually reach um, city zero, right? We can obviously get there from city four. So this road doesn't need to be changed from four to five. Uh, from city two, we can't reach it because we can only go to three. So in order for city two to get to zero, we would have to change this road here and this road here. So that's two changes. And then for city five, we can't get there because the only way to get, well, we can't go anywhere from five really. There's, you can only go to four. So we'd have to change this road to be going the other way. So that's another one. So we'd get a total of three changes. So as you can see, this problem is basically defining a graph and it's a one directional graph where we have basically, you know, one uh, edge and another edge or vertexes and basically there's an edge between them. And we know the direction because it's only unidirectional. So from zero to one, obviously that's the direction. So the way that we wanna do this is we basically just wanna start at city zero and then try to basically do a BFS traversal to all of the nodes that you can reach. And we're going to see if there is an edge from zero to one in the direction of like zero to one, then that means that we have to change this road because the edge needs to be going the other way. It needs to exist from one to zero. Otherwise it's in the wrong direction because then it's leading away from CD zero, not the other way around. And the way that we're gonna do this is we're actually going to maintain a graph. And when we store in our graph, uh, for each element, we're going to store um, basically the other node that we want to have. So we're gonna store pairs in our graph, right? So we're gonna store as the keys, we're gonna put basically the start node and the end node. And we're going to mark this with either zero or one. What zero will represent is whether or not, so zero, oops, um, zero equals um, correct direction and one equals, um, incorrect direction. Let me clean this up a bit. Let me get rid of this. Okay, why does, uh, okay, why are you not cooperating? Uh, okay, there we go. Okay, so zero is the correct direction and one is the incorrect direction. So basically, if the, while we're traversing the graph, we're going to look at what the value here is. So obviously from zero to one, this is an incorrect direction, right? Because it's going the wrong way. But when we store from the graph from zero to, uh, from one to zero, this is zero. So we're basically going to put a fake edge because technically this edge doesn't exist, but we'll do it for the purposes of our traversal because it's gonna help us. So basically we'll traverse our graph and every time we'll start from zero and every time we get to a node, if the direction is wrong, so basically if the value stored for that edge 
is one, then that means that the edge is in the wrong way. Otherwise, if it's zero, it's, it's fine. Then we don't have to change that road. And every time we encounter this incorrect uh, direction, we basically want to increment our solution. And in the end, we'll get our answer. So what this boils down to is basically just a breadth first search, starting from our start city to zero. And we're basically just going to try to go through the entire graph. Obviously, we're going to maintain a visited set to make sure that we don't get into any cycles. Um, and basically, we're going to basically try to traverse to basically the end of the graph. And along the way, if we encounter any edges that are the wrong way, then we simply just add um, them to our solution. And in the end, we will basically just count all of the times we need to flip a road. So yeah, we're going to start from here and basically try to traverse to the end of the graph. Every time we see the wrong direction, um, we'll simply just add it to our answer. So that's the way that we want to do it. Build the graph, uh, keep track of which way is the right way and which way is the wrong way. And essentially, we just need to count uh, how many wrong ways there are. So hopefully that makes sense kind of conceptually and intuitively. If not, don't worry, we're going to go into the code editor now and actually type it up and you'll see how we'll properly build this graph and how we're going to store the, the correct directionality here um, such that when we do the final BFS, we'll get our answer. So that's enough blabbing. Let's now go to the code editor and actually type this up and you'll see how it works. OK, we are now in the code editor. Let's type this up. First thing we need to do is actually build our graph. And there's actually some wizardry and magic that happens while we build this graph, and I'll do my best to explain it. But basically, we need to build a graph, right? So as we said, our graph is going to be a dictionary of dictionaries. So let's define that. So collections.defaultDict of dict, right? So what we want to do is we want to say for the connection, so for a, b in connections, we always want to assume that the connection from A to B is wrong, right? Because say we have a connection from zero to one, obviously this is the wrong direction. So we're going to assume that every time that there is a connection, it's actually in the wrong direction. And you'll see in a second why we can actually make this assumption and why it actually works. Uh, because we're gonna do some wizardry, like I said. So we're always going to assume that the connection is in the wrong direction. And the way that we're going to represent this is we're going to say that the graph from A to B equals to one. So one represents an incorrect direction and zero represents the correct direction. So we're going to say graph from B to A uh, equals to zero, which makes sense, right? If we have the um, connection from zero to one, this is the wrong direction. But if it was the other way from one to zero, then that's the correct direction because everything should flow towards one. Now, I know what you're thinking. OK, this makes sense for the case where it's wrong. But what happens when it's right? Wouldn't we just have it flipped? Because, you know, for example, where we had um, in our diagram here, if we go back, if we see, well, from four to zero, we have a correct connection. And you're absolutely right. But this is where the magic happens. On the way back, actually, when we build the, the connection from four to zero, we'll actually overwrite and flip this value. So this way, when we now process from four to zero, um, originally, the graph from zero to four will be one. But now when we flip it, so now four becomes a, so we'll basically rewrite this uh, instead of from zero to four being um, one, when we put it in the other way from four, it'll actually flip it such that the connection from um, now a, so basically from zero to four, because if four equals a and zero equals b, then actually we will rewrite this. So now the connection from if b is this, so zero to four uh, will actually equal zero. So that way, when we look at all of the paths from zero, we'll see that four is one of them. And now we'll have this value zero. So we've essentially overwritten the original one, which is we we did it in an incorrect way. So from starting from zero, it's obviously the wrong way. But when we then process four here, it's now pointing in the right way. So that's why um, when it's an incorrect node, it doesn't matter that we do this because 
will never actually overwrite that edge and it will be correct. But if there's already a correct node, as we can see from zero to four, then when we actually put four in, um, it will be the opposite. So everything will get flipped and it will be the right way around. So we'll basically have undone the incorrect insertion, but all of the ones that don't have an edge from pointing to zero, for example, zero to one, then they'll never get flipped because one never has an edge pointing back to zero. So this dictionary update won't happen. So it will stay the correct way around. And that's why I said it's a bit of wizardry. Um, and yeah, just a bit tricky to wrap your head around, but hopefully that makes sense. If there actually is a correct node, then when we go and actually process that node, we'll fix everything in the dictionary and it will be fine. So let's now kind of go back to our um, code here. And hopefully that kind of made sense. If not, maybe draw it out on a pen and paper and you'll see how it works. And you'll see now that we actually write the code out um, how it's going to look. So now that we have the graph and we've done our magic, what we need to do is actually process the queue. So we're going to do uh, actually define the queue. So we're going to say collections.dec. And obviously we start at node zero. Um, and we also want to store our answer. And this is basically going to be all of the uh, wrong edges there are, right? So we have our answer. And we also need a visited set to make sure that we don't um, get stuck in a cycle. So we want to say visited. This is going to be an empty set. And obviously we start at node zero. So we want to add that to our set. Now we actually want to traverse our tr uh, graph. So we're going to say while queue, the current node is going to be equal to whatever is at the front of the queue. So queue.pop. And now what we want to do is we obviously need to traverse all of the um, neighbors of our current node. So we're going to say for neighbor, its score in graph. So we're going to look up in the graph, our current node. And remember that the value at the current node is a dictionary of dictionaries, as you saw here. Um, so current node dot item. So we need to traverse over all of those. And first thing we need to do is check whether or not we've actually visited this node before, because we don't want to get stuck in a cycle. So we're going to say if neighbor in visited, sorry, not in visited, then we need to process it. Otherwise, we just skip it and move on. Now what we want to do is we want to say answer plus equals to score. Because remember that basically, we can think of our traversal starting at node zero and going away from it. So if we had to traverse a node um, and the node actually is pointing away from us, then this is the wrong way and we need to flip that one. And remember that we represented the um, edge away from our any node as one and coming into it as zero. So now every time we look up our value here in the dictionary, if the value is one, then that means that the original node was going away from uh, our value and basically away from zero. If it's zero, then that means that there was actually a node, the current node who, who points towards zero. Um, so what that means is that we can essentially just add zero because we don't need to do anything here. It's already in the correct position, like we said, if there was an original node, and if we go back to our example, if there was a node which pointed at zero, then when we built the graph, it would actually get sorted out. But the only ones that will be one at the end of our processing are going to be the ones that never had a node um, to zero, sorry, uh, edge to zero, and therefore we needed to flip it. So basically here, the score, if it's one, then that means that the edge is the wrong way around. And if it's zero, it's the right way around. So that's why we can just add to the score. Obviously, if the score is zero, then nothing happens because we don't need to add anything because it's already the right way. All right. Now that we've done that, we will just want to append the neighbor because we need to process it as well. Whoops, uh, neighbor. And we also want to add that to our visited set. So we're going to say visited dot add uh, neighbor. So once this while loop breaks, we just need to return our answer. Okay, let's run this and it looks like it's fine. Submit it and accept it. Perfect. All right, so time and space complexity. Um, time, obviously we need to build our graph, which is going to involve going over all of the connections. And then we need to traverse the graph. So basically 
our time complexity here is big O of n, uh, where n is the number of cities. Because obviously all the cities are somehow connected and we need to basically traverse all of them. Uh, for the space complexity, it's the same thing. We have to store the graph and we also have to store our Q and our visited set. So this is also going to be big O of n. So hopefully you found this video helpful. This is one where there is a little bit of like magic and wizardry um, figuring this one out. Definitely I had to look at the solution to this one as well, um, but it, it makes sense um, once you can kind of see how the graph building, and I think this is one where actually doing it on a pen and paper makes sense, um, where if there's a correct node, so basically if the original direction was correct, um, the actual value in the the dictionary will be zero. Uh, if not, it's one. And then you can see how we're actually updating the score. I think that's really the crucial part of this question. Everything else is just like a standard uh, traversal. It's just seeing this bit, uh, which is the tricky part. Anyway, that's enough blabbing. If you enjoyed the video, why not leave it a like and a comment, subscribe to the channel to see more content like this, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.